Today we use some malicious compliance to make somebody eat like a dog. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, woman wasn't expecting she would be having a riding buddy. This malicious compliance takes place in the Czech Republic, where many people are often really grumpy. My girlfriend, 30, and I, male 21, were waiting for a bus ride to go to her hometown for a wedding. As you'd expect, we had three bags and they were packed to the point where zipping the bag required you to sit on it, especially her bag as she was one of the bridesmaids. Before we boarded the bus, we had to wait for the passengers who had paid beforehand to reserve seats. My girlfriend and I had not prepaid. We were in somewhat of a line which allowed for the passengers who reserved seats to pass. The line for unreserved seat passengers was essentially respected, except by this woman. She arrived when the line was somewhat being formed and decided to stand next to us. As our turn to board was coming up, she quickly scooted in front of my girlfriend and looked forward as if she was completely oblivious to the fact that she had done something that was traditionally frowned upon. My girlfriend was obviously quite annoyed and started saying out loud, in English, much of the older generation in this country don't understand English very well, well that's a witchy thing to do, can you believe this woman? I was calm as I'd counted how many people had already boarded the bus, and there was still a good chance we'd find seats together in the unreserved rows, so I didn't think it called for any type of confrontation. Still, I'd calmly responded, let's be honest, we can't be surprised when witches do witchy things. Looking back, it was unnecessary, but I was also tired and the bags were heavy so I was a bit impatient. We finally sit down and my girlfriend chose to sit in the two free seats behind her. I would have chosen the seats in front of her and then just slowly reclined my seat back every few minutes so that she wouldn't have noticed my little act of revenge, but this ended up being better. It's important to note that the row the woman chose was the last row with an overhead shelf for bags. The shelf was a little longer in the front, so every person essentially had space for their bag if they moved their bags a little towards the front of the bus. It's also important to mention that the shelf was essentially empty and I could have placed another 5 bags next to ours if I wanted to. We finally hit the road and the woman is talking on the phone, loudly I might add, saying how she's going to visit her grandson who's so sweet but that he plays metal music in his room and she can't stand the sound of it. After she finishes the call, she takes off her windbreaker and plans to put it above her seat. She finally sees that my bag is directly above her seat and instead of moving her jacket 35 centimeters to the right on the shelf or setting her jacket on the empty seat beside her, she decides to confront me in an entitled tone. Excuse me young man, but I can't put my jacket anywhere because your fat bag is in the way. I was bored, so I decided to act like this was a tragedy. Oh no, what will we do? Maybe if we put our heads together we can find a solution. Her face turned from shock to old communist grandma rage. She yelled back, Well don't you know that the shelf space is for the person directly below the seat? Oh, I'm so sorry, I truly didn't know that was like an unspoken rule. So the space above your seat is only for you and the potential passenger next to you? I say, truly acting sorry and embarrassed. Yes, yes it is, so please move it to your spot, she says, acting victorious. Of course, right away. I quickly get up and take my girlfriend's bag off the shelf and place it on the seat where I was sitting next to her. I keep my bag in the exact same spot and plop myself right next to the old woman with a grin. The look on her face was absolutely priceless as she was trying to understand what just happened. I smile at her, take my headphones out and play some death metal way too loud so that she can definitely hear it. I might have hearing loss. I don't even like death metal, but it was definitely worth it knowing she was annoyed the whole time. My girlfriend was sad I didn't sit next to her for the bus ride, but she ultimately agreed it was the best way to get back at her. So crafty. The thing is, I wouldn't want to sit next to a grouchy evil lady like that. That's the only downside, plus your girlfriend was sad. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, want to make petty demands while I'm solving our mutual problem? Okie dokie. Background, this happened a while ago when we lived on a city block of semi-detached houses with tiny front yards. At one point, the older guy who lived next door, there was an alley with sidewalks and grass separating our house from his, which had another house attached to it, passed away and a flipper got a hold of the house. They basically did a cosmetic pass and sold it for tons more than they paid. 
New neighbors seemed nice, but immediately began having tons of problems with the house, and a couple of years later had moved across the country and abandoned the property. I had their number and called to ask if they minded me cutting the grass in front because it was really long. They were super apologetic and explained they just couldn't afford to keep up with the repairs and the mortgage. The house was going to be foreclosed on and even tried to pay me for cutting the grass, which I refused. It only took about 5 minutes extra, these are city yards we're talking about, and kept it from looking like there was a vacant house on the block. One day I had just gotten done cutting the grass and went back inside when there was some knocking at the door. I look out and it's the neighbor two houses down with a vacant in between us attached to their house. They were sort of urgently slash angrily demanding that I come look at something. Thinking there was something consequential going on, I came out and walked with them to the front of their house. The neighbor, looking at their yard in irritation, said, Do you see what's going on here? Me, looking around, not having a clue. Uh... So it turns out that each time I cut the grass, I was inadvertently blowing grass clippings onto the neighbor's landscape pavers, and they were really not pleased with this. I tried to explain how I was just trying to help keep the block look nice by cutting the grass and that as soon as a mild breeze came by, the grass clippings would vanish from the pavers. Well, they weren't too happy with that and demanded that I keep the clippings off their pavers or sweep them off whenever I cut the grass. At that point, I was pretty annoyed but just said in my nicest neighbor voice, No problem at all, I'll take care of it. You won't have any more issues. Swept their pavers off real nice, and then proceeded to comply with the request. I made darn sure zero grass clippings got on their pavers by not ever cutting the grass in front of the abandoned house. Attached to their house, remember? Again, it looked atrocious until it dawned on them that it was now their responsibility and ended up having to pay someone to keep cutting it until the house went through foreclosure. Are they worried it's gonna somehow stain the cement? This isn't like a raked pile of leaves that just got blown all over your property. Our next story is, fill out your expense report properly. I recently traveled for work. The first day at my hotel, I ate the hotel breakfast which is charged separately from the room rate. It wasn't that great so I bought some groceries and ate breakfast in my room for the rest of my trip. My company pays a per diem for food with different rates depending on where you are. Spend more and you cover the difference. Spend less and you pocket the difference. You deduct any meals paid for already, for example, breakfast included in hotel, lunch provided by a conference, etc. The amount breakfast cost at the hotel was less than the per diem. So I just submitted the entire hotel bill and deducted breakfast that day for my claim. I thought I was good to go. I even left a comment in the comment box for that expense in the company software. Nope. HR denies my claim and tells me I cannot expense my breakfast at the hotel which was on the bill as a separate line item. Okay, I'll comply. I simply deduct the breakfast from the hotel expense and add the standard breakfast rate to my meal per diem expense. HR approved that same day. It ended up being about $10 more in my favor. I guess the bottom line is, if they have to audit these things, they don't want any red flags, they don't want any question marks, they don't want anything that they have to spend any longer on explaining while they're going through probably binders and binders of papers. This next story is, you can't go and play until the peas on your plate are gone. Not me, but my sister back a while when she was 11. Back then you had to clear your plate, but my sister was going through an I hate peas phase. My mother refused to let her leave the table until the peas were gone from her plate. I didn't see her do it, but she announced they were gone. Mom looked over and she was allowed to go. When mom cleared the plate, there was a neat circle of peas left on the table that had been positioned under the rim of the plate, and sister was long gone. We still laugh now, five decades later. When I was pretty young and I was dumb, I definitely had the same thing going on except in my case it was like a dessert treat. We had had this like cheapo frozen lasagna for dinner that I just didn't really care about and so I had to figure out a way to get rid of it and somehow I managed to sneak it off into the kitchen and I just dumped it in my brother's lunchbox. Hey, I got my dessert treat but in the morning when my mom had to make lunch for my brother, let's just say she was less than enthused. Our next story is... Give her what she wants. I work at a department store that routinely has percentage off coupons for additional discounts. 
We also offer a 10% senior discount every day, but the rule is only one percentage off can be applied to your purchase. Enter Karen into my checkout line. She has a 40% off coupon and has lots of items to be purchased. After scanning her cart load, I scan her 40% off coupon. She then informs me that she's a senior, obvious, and wants her 10% off also. I tell her that only one percentage can be applied. Of course, she wants a manager. Manager shows up next to me and tells her the same rule. She becomes irate and demands her senior discount. Manager tells her again, only one percentage can be applied, but she is insisting on her senior discount. So manager reaches over me and applies the 10% senior discount. She gets the, I got my way, smirk on her face. The manager removes the 40% off discount from the transaction, and the lady about loses her mind. Where's my 40% coupon? Manager said you insisted on your 10% senior discount, so I gave it to you. She backtracked pretty quickly and said she wants the 40% instead of the senior discount. I really wish she hadn't noticed and only got the senior discount. If you were feeling extra petty, you probably could have gone with the whole like, Sorry, the coupon technically was already used, so the same code can't be used again. It's already cancelled out on our system, there's no way to undo it. This next story is, can't do my job without manager approval? Okay. So I work as a cashier at a low price store. Don't want to say any more than this because it'd be too obvious and I could get in trouble. I, 28 year old female, told my store manager, 22 year old male, last year, that to help out during the times of need, I don't mind being trained as another manager temporarily until he could find someone to replace the one that was leaving. Everything worked well. I also ended up switching back and forth between my original store and the deadbeat one closer to home. I didn't stay at the deadbeat for other reasons I don't want to get into. When I got back to my OG store, I was able to keep the manager position on paper, the pay raise, and the privileges. One day, I was somehow $5 down. This has never happened to me before. Store manager figured it was because I'd used these privileges without calling my coworker, amazing manager, over to supervise. I had been off for several months due to deadbeat store issues. Store manager then told me that I needed to call management anytime I needed to do anything that a normal cashier couldn't do without calling them. Cue malicious compliance. The next day I did exactly that. Any multi-purchase of 24 items or more, I called management over. Associate sale? Manager. Exchange? Sure, manager. I had warned amazing manager that I was planning on doing this. She got fed up that second time and gave me her code because she knew I could do the job and she was too busy actually running the store. The day came where I did this with store manager. By the time I paged the second time, he said, just do what you need. Let me know when you've used your code at the end of the day. Might be small, but it felt good. It might be really, really annoying when they don't put your trust in you like this to the point where they want to micromanage you that level, but it's definitely better to just stick it out for a while and let them realize how annoying and unnecessary it is. Our next story is, my sister wanted to eat like a dog, so our mom made her eat like our dog. My sister was obsessed with 101 Dalmatians and decided that from the moment the film finished, the only way she was going to eat was like a dog. When I say she ate like a dog, I don't only mean she lapped up her food with her tongue, but also that she would not use any tables or cutlery and would only eat off the floor, couch, or anywhere else our dog felt appropriate eating. My mom spent days convincing her that this was a terrible idea, telling her that she should eat at the table with the rest of the family. Eventually, my mom got sick of this and made a plan. If my sister wanted to eat like a dog, then she was going to really eat like a dog. And I'm sure you can see where this is going. My mom decided that my sister was now only going to be fed dog biscuits for every meal until she figured out that being a dog wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And to my sister's credit, she really managed to hold out for a lot longer than I expected for an 8 year old. She held out for a solid day and a half before she decided that she couldn't do it anymore. Anyways, her favorite movie is Aladdin now. Well, just know that it's a terrible idea to have a pet monkey, but hey, I don't see any problem in allowing them to have any amount of rugs that they want. Just tell them not to try to jump off of any high places with it. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. 
Now if you want to hear another absolutely awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.